You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, which can be found on our website at treyerwilderness.com and also on iTunes. Welcome to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where we are homesteading traditionally 100% off-grid today and offering preparedness and survival tips for tomorrow. Here's your host, Tammy Treyer. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me here on Mountain Woman Radio. I am so blessed these days. God has just had his hand on our family in such a tremendous way. And I am just so thankful uh, for his miracles around us. And we've been just getting beautiful snow out here in northern Idaho. Unfortunately, I can't be out snowshoeing in it, but I am enjoying the beauty of it just the same. And I feel really extra blessed today to have an amazing guest joining me today. Uh, Some of you may have heard of Cody from Wrangler Star. He has a very amazing channel on YouTube, has quite the ministry there, and just has some really unique things going on in his life and in his family's life, very similar to ours, and just has so much to share. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Cody to you. Cody, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure. You have such an amazing uh, story, and I would just, I'm going to open the floor to you and let you share um, your story, your family's story, and uh, we have so many other great things to share that he's got going on, but his story is really unique, and I know you guys will really thoroughly enjoy it. Well, I guess uh, I guess started about 10, 11 years ago. Uh, my wife was uh, working, um, at, had an um, executive job, uh, was doing really well, six-figure income. Uh, we lived in the city, close in, in Portland, and I had started a internet company uh, that was also doing really well. Um, we were just making a lot of money. We were buying, spending everything that we made, just living, I guess, the perfect American dream, um, and just really enjoying it. Um, the problem started to become, I mean, uh, that my wife became pregnant on our honeymoon, and, and when we had our son, Jack, we started to see things a lot differently. You know, all of the things, trappings of the city and everything that goes on that you kind of just get immune to, uh, you start to see them with fresh eyes when you start thinking about your bone of your bone and your precious child running around in these streets. So we started to think then, and God really put it upon our hearts, that this maybe wasn't the ideal lifestyle, wasn't the ideal place to raise kids. And also, we really found that it was difficult to, uh, for us to really have a home. Uh, we would work uh, so many hours that we would come home to a cold, empty home. We would eat out three meals a day. Um, and, and it just, we just were tired all the time. And, and we just working, working all the time. And so we came across a, a family that uh, had, had a similar example. They were or experienced, they were ahead of us by several years. And they got to the point where their money and careers and everything became such a distraction that it actually started to, to pull them away from God and, and was about to destroy their marriage. And they recognized this kind of for what it was, and they went really drastic. And, and this guy sold his business. They sold everything that they owned, their beautiful dream house that they built, hoped to retire in, and they moved to an off-grid place in uh, northern Montana. We uh, met them and got the opportunity to go up and spend a weekend with them. And on that drive home from Montana, we resolved that that's what we wanted. Uh, we didn't have a background in homesteading. Neither one of us lived in the country, uh, but we just felt really impressed. We really felt that that was what we wanted to do. And we came home and put our house for sale and started looking for property. Awesome. And it's it's so true. Once you have children, you know, your mindset just totally does 360 in, in you know, so many different areas. And, and so many people today are striving to slow down, but they don't know how. And they're living that hustle bustle life like you described and don't know how to embrace something different. 
and I think that's where you come in and you, and Mrs. Wrangler star and, and people like ourselves where you know we can try to educate people on the baby steps necessary to to head in that direction and and the beauties that are found on the other side there. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I, I can sympathize with folks that, that, that it's hard, it takes courage to do this. Yeah. And uh, especially if you have a job. I mean, the, the problem, excuse me, the problem that so many of us ran into, and, and that, this was our problem as well, is that we were so heavily in debt that we didn't have very many options. We could not leave. We were basically shackled to our careers. Even though we were making a lot of money and, and had all these things, we were spending every bit even more than we had. And we were, even with those incomes, we found ourselves in debt. And what was really heartbreaking to us is when we finally got home, we started really trying to put our finances in order to see where we were at and what we could afford to buy and what we could do. We were so far in debt that we couldn't go anywhere. We had to stay there and add another two years onto our, our dream, just working these jobs and, and doing these things we had to because we were just we were in bondage to it yeah yeah and it's a scary thing because so many are in that it's so liberating when you can get to the other side of that and be able to have that freedom uh, I put a post out on our Facebook page recently about that you know um, in regard to debt and and I was surprised that actually how many people are are embracing a debt-free lifestyle and and have been successful with it because it's an, it's a desire for so many because that bondage adds stress it takes away from your health it really is it really is being able to step outside of that and it is a hard thing it's a hard thing to embrace the unknown too which i'm sure um you can agree with when it comes to you know embracing an off-grid lifestyle and the homesteading aspect of things when when you were living something very different yeah it is and you know i think we mentioned this as we talked earlier that uh when we are faced with those decisions you know I really do believe homesteading is not for everyone. I'm not going to say that, that you can't be a Christian or you can't be prepared or have or, or be a good leader to your family if you're not moving out of the country. Not at all. Not everyone is called to do this. There's important. Most of the people are in the city, and those are all God's children if they know it or not. And there's a lot of work to be done there as well. But uh, for us, it was a it was such a distraction. Um, everything that we looked at was all to glorify man and the buildings and the architecture and, and all the billboards and the noise. It's just incredible how you become immune to those things. And all of those things are, are that chaos, that noise of Babylon. That's how Satan reaches us. That's how he tries to entice us. God doesn't use those methods. He speaks to us quietly. We need to be in a place where we have a, a calm spirit, a stillness, and a peaceful life. That's when he speaks to us. So for us, we found it very difficult to to walk that Christian walk in that environment. Now when I go back to it to visit friends or we go in to get supplies or things, just the, the aggressiveness of it and the traffic and the billboards and all of that, it gives me, it fills me with anxiousness and anxiety and I just can't wait to be <laughs> turning around and heading east, you know, back back home after I get what I get. I well we can so relate to that. It's so funny. It's just it's, it's just overstimulating when you go back into the cities and it, once you get out into this peace, you know, you can, like you said, you can just hear hear God. And that that is something that was a real revelation to me because I've always been close to him. But to be able to hear him and feel him and see him around you is just an amazing thing. And when you're in the stillness of it all, it's when you can really take it in. And I totally get what you're saying. And and But people can homestead from anywhere, like you said, you know, regardless of where they are and what their desires are, um, you know, they can homestead from, from wherever they are, just taking baby steps, but the freedoms that you and I have found in our in our tranquil environments have brought us closer, so much closer to God in, in so many different ways. It's just been awing, and it's something that I treasure as, and refer to as the simple life. And it's easy to get caught up in the craziness, even on your homestead, and, and uh, disregard your pace sometimes, but when you realize you're going too fast and pull yourself back in, it's just so, it's such a comfort. It's such a comfort. It is. And it, it is, again, it's not a refuge. You're not going to escape the temptations of the world. No. The <laughs> devil doesn't care if, you, if you're obsessed about uh, movies or drinking or chasing women in the city or if you obsess about your whatever it is, your animal husbandry, whatever you're doing, he's, he's equally happy. So 
always have to be on guard and all those things. But yeah. one thing that I am glad to see, and, I, and I'm surprised me that it's taken so long, is the church has been so slow in embracing this, prepared this mindset. Yeah. I have heard from, from Christians that say, well, you are uh, taking it upon yourself to go out and do this, and you are you are not trusting God. Um, and, and I would ask them, I said, well, you know, I think we need to participate with God in I think times are going to get difficult when we start to see uh, how the, the federal government, state governments are overreaching and, and becoming more intrusive into our lives and stripping us of our freedoms. You know, it, it's it's easy for us to continue to give these freedoms up and think, well, it doesn't affect me. Mm-hmm. Or they can write legislation towards Muslims and that doesn't affect me, so that's okay. But but it, it's only once the laws and those things are the precedences are in place, it's easy for them to turn them on us as well. Oh, yeah. So. It's important for I think for God's church to to be uh, prepared and, and uh, not only for our own families but there's going to be our own family members that maybe haven't done the preparations that we may need to look after and take care of and I just when I go back and read the story of Joshua you know and and how God used that man to help prepare people he could have provided all the grain he could have fed them through the years of famine but he has always has people cooperate with him. Yeah. Same way with Noah and his ark. You know, he could have saved Noah and his family through the flood, but he had them cooperate. They had to do it. They had to use their hands. They had to prepare. They had to build. Mm-hmm. And I think it's the same thing today. Yeah. Yep. I totally agree with that. And, you know, some people will put the argument out there that, you know, we're too prepared for, for what God wants from us. And I don't think you can ever be too prepared if, God is leading your family. When you have God leading the way and you're listening to him and not, you know, running ahead of him or disregarding him, but you're letting him lead and you're listening and you're being prepared and like you said, keeping your hands involved and doing the diligence and the work that's necessary, you know, I think that that's what he's looking for. You know, um, some people feel that you can get, you know, over prepared and and God will be um, disturbed with that. But I think that there's a balance. I think there's a balance in keeping him in your sights. And and I know your family does that as well as ours. You know, we all go astray and have struggles, but, you know, keep in and and get caught up in things. But keeping him and redirecting ourselves and pulling in closer to him makes such a difference in the world. With my health situation right now, with me pulling closer to him, he has revealed so much to me and has taught me so much during this time. And it's You know, everything we do in life is a lesson. We learn. We learn as we go. We learn from our struggles. We learn from our our celebrations. And I I think that homesteading is all part of that because there's so many celebrations and and struggles that we go through along the way. And that's something that I think is really unique about yourself and your family. And, And I really enjoy is watching your YouTube channel and your honesty and your rawness of what life is really like because that's, you know, that's, it's painting the picture that people need to see because they think that sometimes homesteading is so glamorous, but there's so, there's so much more they're missing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There is, and and we really are careful. At, uh, there's there's so much elitism on. Well, I'm sure you know this on YouTube or online or forums, wherever you get your information, and people kind of will make you think, well, if you're not doing this, if you don't have 40 acres, if you don't have a dozen cows, you, you know, not a real homesteader, and all right. of that. That's nonsense. Yeah, exactly. And because we all have different abilities. Mm-hmm. We all are in different circumstances. And the thing that's so wonderful about God is he's personal. He has a relationship with each one of us that's with completely unique. Yeah. And so if all you can do is put up 12 quarts of peaches, that's what you can do. That's all you have the time for. God understands that. And he'll pick up the slack mm-hmm. for the things that you need to do. Yeah. Um, if, but but we're all, we all, um, yeah, we, I, I'm really careful making sure people don't try to, we don't try to compare one another, but just start small, do what you can with what you have where you're at, and honor him and what you do, and and he will provide for you the knowledge, he'll bring people into your life, whether it be through YouTube videos or whatever, um, and just keep moving forward. Great advice, great advice, and you know, you have created such an amazing, not only just uh, audience on YouTube, but a great ministry because you do your uh, Bible studies and and just reach people in such a tremendous way on your channel. I have to imagine. I mean, I see what you do, what I can see from this side of things, you know, but I, I, it's just amazing. 
yeah, God has moved, uh, has really done some incredible things. I, <clears throat> I, um, we do a, a weekly Bible study. We haven't done it uh, for the last couple of weeks because we had some internet problems, but we're getting that sorted out, and I think we'll be back on this Thursday. But it's it's been really wonderful because it's a place where, where folks could come that have a lot of the people that attend have never grown up, don't know anything about the gospel, and the other half came out of the church with pretty bad experiences, whether they were involved in, in cults or uh, really authoritarian uh, families, and they never have felt comfortable or felt like church was a safe place. They were afraid of it, but they always felt God drawing them into him. And so this has been a real blessing for us and for them as well, that they can come in the comfort of their own home, and they can hear the gospel, and they can be around and, and comment. You know, it's not ideal. It would be better to have everyone here, of course, you know, around the at the house, but it's it's a, it's pretty incredible that people from all over the world that, that follow this, and um, it's, uh, it's amazing to see. Yeah, well, and you never know who you're touching. You know, that's the, I mean, even for us, we, we get emails and correspondence from people, and it just blows us away sometimes, you know, that we've reached people in the way we have, and, and that is a refreshing feeling just to know that we're on the right path and that, that we are doing what we're called, uh, we feel like we're doing what we're called to do, and it's just amazing knowing that we're reaching people. It is, and yeah, you don't know who's watching. I, I when we, I, when the video, when the channel started getting really popular, of course, you know, the more popular you get on, the more views you get, the more chance you have of having people come that want to, you know, tear the whole thing down or diminish what you're doing, right. and never being a public figure at all, and never being exposed to that sort of vindictive, uh, yeah. vitriolic anger and hatred was really hard on me and, and, and I would stew on it and I, even though I would get a thousand positive comments at that one comment you know some people really know where to stick it in and where it's going to stick with you for a while and make a comment and and I was struggling with that and that was really my desire my passion to retaliate um, to have the last word and all of that and I you would start to see that these people that would do that they were repeat offenders they were doing it on every video and God really spoke to me and said, you know, leave them alone. Mm -hmm. They're they're here. They're watching. They're watching every video. And they think that they're not getting anything from it. And they think that they are um, maybe you know, de destroying something, but they're not. Mm -hmm. It's actually breaking a it, I, I can use that to break down a barrier. So that was a great comfort to me. And, and God has been really merciful uh, when I look at the amount of that. It's so small uh, for the numbers that we have that it's, um, it, it's, he, he only will, will give us what we can handle, right? Right, right, exactly. <laughs> and it's, it is crazy because, you know, in the beginning I struggled with that too because you do want to retaliate, but you know what? I've found, you know, not answering or killing them with kindness, you know, has turned them around, kept them on our channel, and, and that's so true with what you were sharing. Oh, wow, that's just got to be intense to know that, you know, the way God put that on your heart, that they are they're, they're getting something from this regardless. And, and you and I will never, ever understand that mindset. I have such a struggle understanding how people process and think that way. But, you know, that's that's what makes the world go around. And those are the people that we want to reach the most sometimes, I think. It's really sad. I mean, when you think about it, I, I look at them so much differently than I used to. It's, it's, it's the only way they have to reach out. They're, yeah. they're crying out for something. Yeah. You know, they're completely in the camp of the devil. Yeah. They see a fam the family that, that's happy and, and, and doing what they want to do and having the freedom to do that and laughing and enjoying one another, and that galls someone who has maybe lost that or never been able to find that. Yeah. And the only way that they can cope and deal with that is to attack that thing, which is shining a light on, on all of the things that they don't have. And so it's really a pitiful thing. It is. It is. It's sad. But, you know, I've often said to my girlfriends, I have a bunch of prayer warriors that connect, and, you know, it's just... Those situations are the ones that make me turn around and just stop and pray for them because I, I do feel for them. It's sad to know because I embrace happiness. I embrace the positive side of life, and that's just who I am. And I, and I, I, if I'm not, I'm struggling. I want to be happy. I want to be seeing the blessings and not missing them. And it just hurts me to know that people are missing everything that's around them because there's so much good around us if we, if we open our eyes. And so many people miss it. And you know, we're opening a lot of people's eyes in a lot of different ways between what your family's doing and our family's doing. And and I think that that's necessary as well as what we're teaching, the traditional skills and, and the skills, 
life skills that will carry us through in this really uncertain time. Yeah, I agree. And so it's such a, um, you know, the, the Bible can be, it was written such a long time ago, and, and when you're really living, you know, the current modern technologi in technological age, and you're starting to see references to animal husbandry and references to agriculture and things, when you're so removed from those, they, they, they kind of ring hollow. It's hard to relate to them. But when you get out, and, and even on a small scale, even if you get your hands in the dirt in a 4x4 four four garden box in, your, in the suburbs in your house, it's incredible how God's Word comes alive and how those parables, how those analogies can just come into your mind just in, in technicolor. Yes, yes, so true, so, so true. I have never felt happier than when I'm in my garden barefoot and just taking it all in and just watching things grow and also sharing that time with my son. It's just, it's every step of the way, you know, as you take those baby steps into your homesteading dreams and everything, you know, you see so much and you grow so much with the experiences and it's just so um, freeing, but also nurturing at the same time. It's just amazing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I, I agree. <laughs> now, before we don't hit on your best, subjects here. I want to say that for those of you listening, you can find um, Cody's YouTube channel by just going to wranglerstar.com, W-R-A-N-G-L-E-R-S-T-A-R.com, and that will take you right to his YouTube channel. But there's some other really great things that Cody and his family have going on, and I want to open that door for you, Cody, to talk about your latest, your book that you have out, Homestead, uh, Modern Homesteading, Rediscovering the American Dream. Uh, yeah, so um, we uh, we've had a book out now for uh, a couple months. Um, it's just going into its second printing, it's just incredible. Um, we've been really blessed by it. And we had no intention of writing a book. Uh, we had a uh, the, the channel the channel was, was was doing is doing really well, and and so that has um, I guess brought us in contact with a lot of people, a lot of opportunities. So there's always someone calling that wants to get on the coattails and wants to me to promote a product and all that. And I've been very careful to keep the channel clean yeah. and, and to not do that, not to sell out. I, I could make three times the money I do on the channel than I do if I were just accept these brand deals with this, but I'm not going to do it yeah. because yeah. this channel has been given to me and we're going to honor God with it. I honor my subscribers. I, 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 I have worked hard to earn their respect and it's important that the channel remains, its integrity remains. With that being said, we had uh, had several publishers contact us and say, "We want to do a book," and you know, we would maybe talk to them a little bit. We could just see that they didn't really get what we were doing, and they, they simply was a was a money making venture. Yeah. We had a um, a publisher new leaf that contacted us, which is which is a, um, a family publishing company. It's been in the family for two generations. Good Christian family, and they called us and we spoke with them on the phone, and we really clicked and hit it off well, and, and decided to go ahead and write this book. It was it was a really nice uh, platform for us because with over what thirteen hundred videos I think we have on YouTube, people are joining all the time. Five six hundred people a day will subscribe to the channel. Um, they kind of get a niche going on. It's hard to get the backstory, and, and so the book was really a great opportunity for us to start from the very beginning and tell the whole story, which brought us up here to where we're at today. And let me tell you, it is an amazing book. I thoroughly enjoyed reading it, and I love you, the way you guys incorporated your videos into the book. I thought that was just absolutely awesome, because where you could expand in the book, you link to a video, and it's just, it, and, and not only that, like I mentioned earlier, you're, um, and, and also kudos to you on the integrity of your channel, because it's very hard to find family-friendly channels, and that's something that we strive for, too, but and, and not to sell out. And we've struggled with that too, uh, with lots of people contacting. But I love that you are doing the same thing we are and focusing this on God and not on on the value of the almighty dollar because that's so awesome. And, and, and you yourself are growing in leaps and bounds. Did you, you just hit like 300,000 subscribers recently, have you not? Being a thousand subscribers, yeah, it's, it's hard. The numbers are just staggering. I was looking at it yesterday, and we, we get a quarter of a million video views every 24 hours. That's incredible. That is just amazing. 
That's amazing. Right. I can't even imagine. It's hard to comprehend. <laughs> yeah. I know, it's hard to comprehend. <laughs> but there's a, there's a hunger for that. And like yeah. you just touched on, it, it is, those of us with kids, I mean, it's terrifying having them on the internet. Oh, gosh. It is so, yeah. so, they're so bad. It's so hard to find something that's even suitable. And even things that we'll, we can get that are, uh, you know, like from so called Christian websites that say these are family friendly, yeah. we'll put them in there and they're not. Yeah. So the channel we've been, um, we're, we're very, very uh, diligent that it will be friendly for anyone to watch. You'll never have to worry about something or a content that is not going to be appropriate. Yeah. And you know, there's a, I think there's a strong desire for that. I mean, the, I guess people don't think would think that most people are agnostic or, or don't believe in God, but I don't think that that's the case. I think that the, a good lion's share of this country actually does have a, a strong foundation belief in Christ, whether they practice Christianity or not. And they, when they have families, they don't want to watch that that garbage. They want something that's, that's wholesome that they can share with their family that they can benefit from. And I, I, I feel that there's a, there's a, a, a lot of opportunity for Christians to want to go this direction. Absolutely. Yeah, I really believe that. And that's where we have received a lot of our compliments is because we are a clean channel, family friendly. And, and we get a lot of responses. I, I've started doing Periscope lately and um, the one lady mentioned that her son loves our website and loves our channel, and you know that that feels good because that's that's what we want to reach. We want to reach everybody, and we want something for kids. Because I know how hard it is, like you said, looking on the internet to try to find safe stuff for your kids, and it's just it's it's scary. <laughs> it's it's just it's just horrible. There's and TV is the whole other aspect of things, but that's another conversation. And we haven't had TV for ten years, and don't miss it. But but your your book is amazing, and I like it that it, it walks you through your 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 struggles. It's not just all the pretty stuff that happened and all the all the progress you made, but it's the struggles you made along the way, and that's what makes it real, and that's what is going to help people too. Not along with the clean channel and and all the do it yourself and how to things you share. It's also the honest truth of what life is like. I watched one of your videos one day. And you mentioned about the mundane, you know, our, you know, most, most of the days are just mundane and that's how it is here too. But it's, it, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't agree more. It's, um, it's been a great blessing for us and our, our family has benefited from it. Our, our marriage is, is much stronger for it. And we just, and we just, you know, as my wife says, I like you. I want to be around you. We like each other. <laughs> we, we want together. We don't want to, I don't want to have to, to, we're really fortunate that I don't have to get out and, and hit the roads and commute for two hours and go, go to another place to work. So, I mean, God knew knew what our family needed and he knows what your family needs as well and and um, whatever that looks like, um, just do it. Don't be afraid. You know, as I, as I always remember, if we have to make a tough decision in life and we don't know which one it is, uh, choose the harder one, the one that you don't want to do, because that's probably God's way. And that's so true. And that's so true. And that's where all the lessons are, and 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 just the good stuff. I put a quote out the other day that the best parts of life are on the other side of our comfort zone, and and that's so true. Everything that we've ever been blessed with in in, in an intense way has been on the other side of an extreme situation and I don't I don't ever want to leave a stone unturned when God opens a door and, and provides for us you know I don't want to sit there and be afraid I want to have full trust in him and and know that he's got this and whatever's on the other side is going to be bigger and better than I could have ever imagined it, it's true I mean when you look back on, on the events of your life usually it's the, the tragedy the near misses or things that were really hard on you and, and especially as a married couple that when you were scared and frightened and, and then you come came through it those are the ones you look back upon and like man wasn't that great I mean when you reminisce do you not talk about and reflect upon those well you know the difficulties you never reflect upon when everything was perfect and we had lots of money in the savings account and the propane tank was full and all of this it's always the catastrophes and it's that's just the way God made us so we can we need those things. We need those adversities to wake us up because it's in our tendency to drift away from God. Yeah. And it would, 
opportunities if I really go off a cliff. Right. <laughs> so true. So, so true, Cody. I enjoy my time talking with you so much. And I know there's one other thing that I want to allow you to have time to talk about. You have something else um, that's big for this 2016 that I know you would like to share with my audience. Oh, yeah. It just, I guess I can talk about it now because I see it's on their website. Um, Mother of News, the magazine, we will be partnering with them uh, next year. We'll be writing um, articles in the magazine uh, as well as doing some uh, original content videos for them. And I'll be the spotlight speaker for the six uh, Mother Earth News Fairs. Uh, there'll be one in Belton, Texas, Asheville, North Carolina, Albany, Oregon, West Bend, West Wisconsin, Seven Springs, Pennsylvania, and Topeka, Kansas. And you can go to MotherEarthNewsFair.com and get all of those dates. But uh, the whole family will be there. And uh, again, I'll be speaking there and we'll be having book signings and doing a lot of traveling next year. Awesome. Awesome. I'm, I'm just so excited for you guys. You know, you've worked really hard for what you have. And, and God is surely blessing you, but you're blessing so many people along the way. And um, I just hope that that gives you good comfort knowing that you are really um, adding quality to people's lives. And I'm, I just want to personally thank you for what you do because our family enjoys a lot of your material um, very often. And uh, I'm just thankful that I've had the opportunity to speak with you also and have the opportunity to read your book, which I will be putting a review out on our website for you also because Home, new, new, and even um, experienced homesteaders can gain so much from what you have shared in your book. So, I'm I'm really excited for you and your family and all that you have going on. Well, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure talking with you. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm going to give you the floor one last time here, and uh, if you'd like to give our audience um, some encouraging words on on in, anything that comes to your heart. Oh, you know, I guess just uh, the, the thing that was the most important, I guess the most important thing for, for my wife and I is, <clears throat> excuse me, for us to be on the same page. Um, and I really, I really do see the power when a husband and wife can unite together and, and have a common goal that we're absolutely, both of its results go that direction. There's absolutely nothing when you partner with God that you can't accomplish. So be sure, you know, that before you make those big important decisions, especially on something like homesteading, that you're not moving uh, your wife or husband out to a place that they that they don't want to be. Or be sensitive to it, so you're not bullying them. And 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 you, you might have a loving and kind spouse that will just will do it because you want to do it. But just be sure that you're on the same page. And if 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 you're not, don't do it. Find a solution. Find something that you guys can both uh, agree on. And put yourself in harness and start pulling, and you'll be there. That's awesome advice. That's really awesome advice. You know. Before you can take that one step at a time, if you're not in unity and, and letting God lead the way, you're just going to be going down a rough path. So that 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 was really amazing advice and unusual for my for my audience to hear because everybody usually tells them to take one step at a time. So I thank you greatly for that. <laughs> well, if you want to see what happens when you don't do that and your whole <laughs> life implodes, then you can read my story in my book because we uh, didn't do it, didn't do it right on the first time. And you know what? We all travel down those those wrong paths, thinking that we are on on the right one, racing way ahead of God, and and then realize. So you're not alone, Cody. You're not alone. We've been there, done that too. <laughs> yeah, I could sum it up as saying, "Thanks for the idea, God. I'll take it from here." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, Cody, I thank you so much for your time. I wish you the best of luck with 2016 and all your endeavors. And I'm so excited to hear that your book is on a second print and totally understand why. So thank you for your time today. And and you and your family, I, I'm sending a lot of love and prayers. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to your audience. Yes. And everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. And until our next show, you guys take care and God bless. You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where you will learn something new every week. We hope you enjoyed the show and encourage you to join us at TreyerWilderness.com. And be sure to connect with us on iTunes. Remember, your reviews on iTunes are very important to us and help us reach more people just like you.